Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of I Made This. I'm your host, Brian Gillespie, developer advocate here at Directus, and I have got my extra special guest with me today, Mr. Miguel Stevens from Studio Monty. Miguel, happy to have you, man. Hi, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. So hey, like you and I have talked inside our Directus community a couple times through Discord or I I think even on several like GitHub issues probably, but uh, you know, for those who don't know you, maybe uh, give us a little intro or you know, what's the backstory? Sure. Uh, so my studio is called Studio Monty. We're a Belgium-based web company. We do lifestyle websites, boutique kind of websites. So not not the big technical pro- products, but more like the the well and refined designed projects. And we always offer a CMS, of course. Which is directors. <laughs> <clears throat> so we don't necessarily have to dive in uh, directly to directors. Um, I'm super glad that you're using that. But um, you know, tell me a, a little more uh, about the agency. Like, how did you get started? What what led you to that? You know, if we back up even further, like, how did you how did you get into development? Okay, cool. Good question. I think for me, the case, like many people, has been like a, a child passion. When I was eight years old, my dad bought me a Pentium 386, or what was it called? I don't even remember. And I was I'm not sure. The 386. <laughs> a very old computer with, with floppy disks. Uh, okay. Yeah. And as I, you're trying to think of like what the, the, what the, the megahertz they were running back in the day. I think the first computer I had was like, Maybe like 96 megahertz or something <laughs> like that, right? I don't even remember. <coughs> I know like a diskette, a disk, how do you call it in English? It's like 3.14 megabytes or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and the floppies were even less than that. But uh, I started experimenting with Microsoft front page, which like Dreamweaver is really old, but front page, that's a whole other level. Um, so I think I just, ro- I, I started making small websites with cheat codes for roller coaster tycoon things like that hey, there you I go <laughs> so and then my my whole journey has been development i worked in some big development companies in ghent and i worked in some boutique agencies but it's always been about about design and development yeah so i i, I, lo- I love both i'm not a hundred percent developer i it has to be beautiful, right? <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. So, and you guys mentioned that you focus on boutique websites. Could you, you know, like expand that a little bit? Like specifically, like what does the average project look like for you guys? Sure. Um, I think with boutique, I mean, those are mostly websites with less than 10 pages. Um, design is very important. They want to have something unique about them. So we don't do... It's not like WordPress templates um, where you can clearly see the template. We always we work with a designer. We, we do custom designs uh, and custom development. It's it's very much focused on the specific needs of each client. And yeah, and then it's in the lifestyle sector. So uh, it's fun companies, interior design, architecture, uh, things like that. Yeah, and uh, very local as well. Yeah. So a smaller businesses. Um, clients who are very concerned with image and design and uh, looking professional. Yeah. Is that a fair a summarization? Point. Yeah, cool. <laughs> very fair. <laughs> um, what, is your, what does your process look like on those projects? Like on the front end, like how, how do, you mentioned it's local, but how, how do most of these clients find you? Yeah. Um, for us, it's been a case of mouth to mouth, right? So um, I think we started only one year ago and all projects we've had have been through local networks. Um, you make a website for someone you know, before you know it, their uncle wants a website and then you really get started and, and your network grows. I do try to, there's a, we're based in Ghent, Belgium, and there's a good community of, uh, of uh, people that are yeah, entrepreneurs. What's the word in English? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got it. You yeah. nailed it. But, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of events uh, that we, that I tried to go to, to meet people, to talk about how we can help people. So it's been word of mouth. That's the English. Oh, uh, cool. Okay, primarily. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, talk to me about your process. Like, yeah, like being a, like you're doing smaller projects that are, let's say, not like super data intensive. Um, 
it's like what's your like what's the time span from like conception or, or like the idea phase to like launching a project talk me tell me through your process because i'm super curious on that like what those type of projects actually like what the flow looks like okay good question um I've been refining this because I feel a process is really important to make something replicable and scalable. So what's important for, for me is I always start with a very intense uh, strategy session. And uh, so it's like one to two hours where we sit down with the client and really listen, like what, what are your challenges? Uh, where do you want to go with your business? Who do you want to be in five years time? It, it can be very personal because each business has like these typical problems. They want more revenue. They want the right type of client they want they want um, their website to provide more information better customer service for their clients so we really drill down the goals for each website and only then do we start going to uh, wireframing to to design and develop gotcha now in that strategy call is that like after you've already quoted them and they sent them a proposal or oh, yeah right i forgot that part so i think it starts with a sales conversation um, okay. You, you call on the phone mostly, or you go face to face and you just listen. Can we help you? I think it's important. Um, the big money topic. Uh, there's a lot of interesting videos about this, but a lot of people are read about, a lot of starting people are afraid to discuss money. They don't want to talk about, about money up front, but I think it's important that you know what's in, what's their budget. What can we do to help them and um, how can we make it work? So it's, I think it's this first sales call is. It's very important. Yeah, that's that's always the toughest like conversation, right? <laughs> right. Like, hey, fun. I've got a I've, yeah. I've got a number in my head. You've got a number. Right. Yeah. You know, like, how do we talk about? It? Like, how do you how do you address that with clients? Like you said, you you don't shy away from it. I think during those first fifteen minutes, it has to be clear what the budget is. So if it's not clear from them telling you, you can just ask up front, like, what budget do you have in mind? Um, and if that range is acceptable for the type of websites, then we can then we can go for that. Because, for example, startups, I wouldn't work with a fresh startup because they don't need a custom built website. Startups can use Wix or Squarespace, um, which is mostly enough to help them. So it it would be it wouldn't be good customer service of me to try to sell them a website because they don't need custom websites in their first gotcha. month. Yeah. So I try to be very honest. Um, I'm not the type of person who just takes on a client to get the money yeah. and then no, I can't help them. If I can send them to Squarespace, I will happily do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. honestly yeah, it's transparency, right? Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's super critical, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and even being, like you said, you started the agency about a year ago. I can imagine like in the early days, it's a little harder to do that, right? Where like, hey, we need a couple of projects through the door, but uh, still, if it's not a right fit, you you turn them away anyway. That's that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, you have to take on a lot of projects, obviously, because you just started and and there's no no real cash flow. But yeah. Hey. yeah. Well, cool. Uh, so you have the strategy session. Um, you guys get into a, like their company goals and a, like aspirations and things like that. And then how do, how do things progress from there? Sure. Um, once we know after the strategy session, I make a content model, which is like a sitemap, but for each page, I also include elements. Um, this happens after research. So we look at competitors, we look at the industry. Um, what does the industry expect from websites? of that sector and, and um, what does the competition do? What do they do good? What don't they do good? And then we discuss some styles. There's there's more meetings. Uh, and then it's on to the design phase. Uh, for bigger projects, we do a style guide first. Uh, if there's a copywriter to be involved, you're a copywriter, obviously. Uh, and then it's on to design. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey, like, do you have, any like philosophy like what's your design philosophy yeah you know, I, I i think for me when i used to do projects like doing competitor research is is absolutely critical right you got to yeah. know what the landscape is but how do you how do you not let that inform your own design 
You know what I mean? Like you, you don't want to just like copy competitors or you don't want to, it, it, on the surface, you may not know whether that is actually working well for the competitor or not. Right. Yeah. So hey, like, what is your philosophy on design and like, how do you navigate uh, just say, hey, like, Hey, here's what everybody else is doing. Here's what we think is going to actually work well for you as a, to your clients. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's important, obviously, to look at the top 10, right? We, we, we don't compare with, with um, businesses that are on page 20 on Google. But I think it's important if you're looking at, like, what's the content going to be to only focus on the content. It's like you just said, we try to, if we see, like, an interesting piece of content, I, I copy-paste the text and put it in Figma in, like, a sort of prototype. We don't screenshot designs because, like you say, if you start screenshotting designs from other companies, your design will be influenced by that. Uh, so I think it's important in the, in the first phases where the content is being decided um, that you just focus on what's, what's being written, what's being told. Um, I also saw an interesting video by The Future, and they, they make this comparison like uh, a website has to answer questions. So we always start with that in mind. Uh, I remember uh, a quote and I know, said it and they say, a website is like a conversation, right? You come to my website, it's like you come into my house and you, you have questions for me. Like, will this product help me feel more, whatever, I don't know. So the, the order of your website, the content has to answer all people's questions. And this is something we, I try to keep in mind when I'm building the content model. Yeah, I, I love to hear you say that because there's a... Everybody says it should be content first, but hey, like what I see a lot of times is like there's a whole board of inspiration of like, hey, we like this site, we like this site, we like this site, and then you're working backwards of like, hey, let's let's incorporate this theme and hey, like take some ideas from this. And hey, what I'm hearing you say is that you guys you you don't take screenshots of other websites. It, you might like snip some content but it is very much like content driven. There's no, like when you're in the design process, there's no like outside influences from other websites. Is that I, right? Yeah, maybe a bit. I, I mean, I have a designer who I work with and she uh, she loves designing. So she's not content first. I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan of content first, but I think it depends. It's, it's one of the biggest chicken or egg problems in the web design industry for me is do you do the content first and then have your designer build around the content? Or do you have the designer design first and then put the content in the available space that the designer chose? It's, we, we've been trying both uh, ways of working and there's no winner yet. I get uh, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I think it's just, just like the messy middle of like, hey, the, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> where things come together. I don't know if there's an answer to, if someone has an answer to the, the big chicken or egg design versus content first uh, question. Please let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. This sounds great. Uh, so, hey, like going through the design phase, like uh, obviously, uh, hey, like are, are you, who does the development? Like the actual, like are you doing a lot of the actual code at this point or got somebody else on the team? Like what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I, it depends if it's if it's really busy and I'm like doing a lot of intakes and strategy, then I outsource the development. Um, I'm working with someone who is really capable. Uh, I had to look uh, for a long time before I, I found him, but I have someone who helps me out. And sometimes I do projects myself. Um, it's good to to stay in the flow, right? So Nuxt is evolving very quickly. Direct is evolving really quickly, and I I want to. Uh, be up to date with everything. So I, I still like to do a uh, develop as well. To, but if it's still yeah, like to I jump to out. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's a, like a common case for a lot of us, right? You get into it, like you, you love building stuff and then you know, like inevitably you've got to take on more of the business stuff. And that gets in the way of, of like the fun stuff of actually building and creating. Um, and, and it's very much the same way for me where, like I, I love to build and create and like the other stuff kind of, I, I, I enjoy that as well, but it kind of gets in the way, right? I think it's, you never want to have like zero hundred to one side. I think it's always, I always love developing. Maybe it's the same for you. Uh, yeah. When there's time, it's, it's great to just 
put on your headphones and be in the flow for a whole afternoon writing code. It's amazing. It's still fun. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, um, what what is the average timeline? So, like we we've talked about the process, like it, it start to finish. It, like, how quickly are you? You know, how long does it take for the average project to mm -hmm. start to launch? I think in theory it would take like one month, but in practice it's always two, three, four <laughs> months. Uh, it's because I think there's something we're struggling with. It's very hard to to really. I mean, it's only one year since we started, but it's very difficult for me right now to know exactly how long something will take. Um, sure. You're depending on on how, how fast does the design go, what types of content. So sometimes the client wants to write the copy himself, which is mostly something that will take long because nobody likes writing copy, unless you're a copywriter. Uh, your so I, I, <laughs> I noticed that clients seem to, seem to like not want to do it, so they, they keep on... Um, delaying it and then it never happens so it's it's a combination of waiting for assets if there's like a photographer involved which is something for the types of websites in the studio multi builds we i want to work with good photography uh, and minimal design is really important so then you have a photographer who has to uh, be involved in the process so there's a lot of variables right that can yeah. stretch or tend the timeline but you you don't know in advance yeah. It, they, yeah, like on the photography side, do you require your clients to to work with a professional photographer, or? Well, this is something I started doing now since the last client. Yeah, I it's it. included in the in the yeah. in the offer as well. I used to add like an, an add on, like photography optional, but there people are paying a lot of websites a lot of money for a website, and they're like, I don't need good pictures. Um, so now it's just included in the price, and it's. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I, I always hate to see a, a well-designed website and then like the same stock photos that you've seen on yeah. thirty-five other websites. It just ruins it ruins everything. The stock photos are the worst. I think yeah. an, a dark iPhone picture by the owner is even better than a stock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, at least it's real. Yeah, or it feels oh. real. I, I, I'm sure that's a real person in the stock photo, but yeah, it, you know, some of those <laughs> stock photos, I, I don't know, like how people make those poses <laughs> like I mean, you never see that stuff in real life right well i think it, it's your eye sees it directly i mean a stock photo you can see it from very far and it it gives the sight a sort of fake feeling it's it doesn't feel right when you see stock photos yeah yeah um so hey, like shifting into like the tools that you're using to build the sites like what is your preferred like stack look like you know I, um, what so tools using, are you using on the front end, on the back end, that sort of stuff? Yeah. So it's uh, for us, it's Nuxt tree on the front end, and then Directus uh, on the back end. Yeah, gotcha. And right. we're running it on Docker containers for our production servers as well as uh, local local hosting is also on Docker. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You, definitely one of my preferred stacks. But like, what what led you to those two pieces? Like. Yeah, you know, were you using those a year ago when you started? Or yeah, you know, I know you mentioned front page that you were using way back in the day to build <laughs> stuff. Like walk walk me through the progression because that's that's super interesting for me because I, I remember front page, I remember Dreamweaver. Right. Um, I even I'm I'm not sure I, I'm not sure if Angel Fire or like Geo Cities were ever popular outside the US, but it was like a it was like a free website builder where you could get on and have all the animated gifs and like all the all the crazy counters and all that stuff back in the day but that's that's how i got my start in the industry as well was back in the day using those tools to kind of scratch stuff together i think geocities rings a bell but i, I never heard of what is angel fire a angel fire it was yeah it's basically like a, a free website builder host like it, you could you could throw like crazy backgrounds and stuff on there and write your text. Uh, but the rest of it, you know, back in those days, it was all just whatever HTML you could throw together yourself. Yeah. Marquee elements and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I started my development. I mean, when I, my first company I worked with was Laravel. So it was PHP. Um, I loved Laravel. It's, 
It was easy to use for me. It was a, a dream come true after writing spaghetti code in PHP. But the older I got and I started working with Vue and I started loving JavaScript a lot. Uh, for me, it feels uh, much cleaner, the syntax and PHP. Uh, I'm stirring some feathers here, I know. It's a big discussion. <laughs> PHP lovers are everywhere and the JavaScript lovers. But for me, it's always been JavaScript. So when I started this company one year ago, I promised no PHP. So um, my first thought was, okay, I need a, I need a JavaScript backend. Um, so I started looking into headless CMS systems, um, Strapi, Strapi, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, yeah. Was the first one I tried, but I, I found it difficult to work with. I don't know. It was, it didn't feel right. So I tried a few others. I tried story block. I tried content folks for a while. And then someone on Reddit mentioned directors. Um, mm -hmm. I think version 10 was just released. Uh, when was it released? Do you know version 10? Uh, version 10 or version 9? Uh, version 10, 10 already. was. Well, yeah, version 10 was not so long ago. Version 9 was like a big change. Version, version 8 was on PHP. Oh really? And version and nine, version it. nine was like the switch to to know to, to like the JavaScript side of things, and that was a, a crazy big shift. That was about the same time that I actually found Directus myself. Okay, was when when so, version nine was released, which you never was, you weren't there in the PHP era. I I was not. No, I I wasn't even aware of the tool, which is okay. which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> And so I think it's someone on Reddit brought me to Directus and I, I tried it out, set it up. Documentation is great, and I just got it working. And then I just built my first website. Yeah, nice. So, a, a, like, what were a, you said? A, like, the other tools didn't feel right, and that that definitely feels like a like a designer thing. Of like a it doesn't feel right. But were there a, like any like issues that you encountered that were, you were like, hey, this is this is not working for me. Like, can I you even remember any of those tools? Like what were the the red flags? Like if you can remember any. Yeah, I think for me, now that I think about it, the biggest thing was since, I mean, headless CMS systems can be used for like internal tools for software, but for our studio, it's always going to be a CMS system. So my thought was if a client, I remember with Strapi, I thought, if a client has to work on this, it's going to be complicated. And for with directors, it just felt very calm. And I could see my even less tech-savvy clients work in this system. So for me, it was mostly a choice of, okay, which system are the people, my clients, going to be able to work in without having to call me too much with questions. Yeah. It, it, and not you. having to yeah, do a 12-hour CMS training. It is very <laughs> much from uh, like the client perspective. Yeah I, yeah, I can remember that personally, like seeing it. Like I, I went through a bunch of those as well, and like the seeing the white space and, and just I, you mentioned calmness or the the calm, uh, of like hey this is really well designed and it's open source which is great yeah, uh, but I can remember looking at it and like hey like okay yeah this feels right yeah um, I think it was a, a gut feeling it's like first impression right you open, yeah, you yeah. set up doc you open the tool and it's like okay this feels good and I think. What I also remembered is the image handling in direct is, is, is perfect. For CMS systems, there are always going to be images. And the, I think the file library and all the systems around it are built really, really solidly. So yeah, that's a big plus as well. Yeah. Um, it, what does like the average project look like for you inside Directus for, for a client? You know, like maybe through like the data model, yeah, you know, maybe just talk me through some of those, and and I think you've got a few things to show us, but uh, maybe just really, like talk me through how the projects look inside Directus before we jump into that. Okay, cool. Um, I think the last three projects were mostly similar. So we have pages, we have a page builder um, using the uh, many to any builder system, and then we have just like projects, testimonials, the team page. So it's mostly uh, managing data. Um, we're not too heavy on flows at the moment. There's a few flows for like building, which we'll get into in a, in a, in a few minutes. But um, yeah, it's mostly page builder. That's the biggest uh, chunk. And we use blocks. So every page you can just 
uh, compose yourself with blocks. Um, clients don't really use that too much. It's mostly for myself. A block is reusable. It's a nice, neat piece of code, which can even be reused in, in other projects. So, yeah. yeah. How do you, like, how do you present like the CMS and like direct us to your clients, like through that phase? Is that like a discussion that you have, like at the very beginning of a project is like, Hey, we've got your website. You're going to be able to edit all the content through this CMS. You know, like talk me through how you present that solution to the client. Mm -hmm. Um, in my last uh, few offers, I included uh, screenshots or a video of directors. And the good thing is that clients uh, mostly come from WordPress. So when they see directors, they're like, this is impossible. <laughs> They this almost can't so believe how easy it is. <laughs> so crazy. The, the reactions are just amazing. Uh, the last two clients were really like, this is so easy. It's simply what they said. I sat next to them for the CMS training. We put in some data together and just, they came from work and they were like, this is really easy. So it feels really good to have clients um, have this, this sort of really good experience. Um, now, are, are most of them coming from like the... the drag and drop page builders where they've got to go in and manage like all the padding and spacing yeah. and colors and all of that. Okay. Yeah. Or from WordPress installations that are like a plugin hell that everything's a plugin <laughs> and they have to be, and people don't like that. I think directors, you can also, you can protect your clients. Like you give them roles and they only, they can only edit what they're assigned to do. I know you can do that in WordPress as well, but WordPress feels like it's very, it's very much and clients, they mostly don't have a lot of time. They maybe want to add a new testimonial. They have just want to log in, click testimonial, add new, and be done with it. So yeah, they don't want to yeah geek out on the the software or the tools like like we do. They just want to get right. in and out. They, they've got other stuff to do. Yeah, they don't care what tool it is. It just has to be easy enough. Yeah, cool. Well, um, do you want to maybe share your screen and and show us you know like. I would love to share with the audience like what the the typical like front end project looks like for you, and then okay. um, you know maybe show us around the the back end if you're if you're able to. Yeah, sure. Let me just share my screen real quick. Maybe. Okay. Cool. Um, so this is a, a project we finished um, two months ago. Um, it's a, a website for a company that does funding. Um, yeah. We like white space, we like beautiful fonts. Um, these pages are, so this is Nux3. Uh, this is a statically generated website. So okay. um, it's, on, it's built on Netlify. Uh, so it's not SSR, it's SS, SSG. What's, uh, what is the, what's the, the display font there? Like all the headings? The, this font? Yeah. I, I, I really like that font. Have a look. I should know that. <laughs> Asilka, it's Silka, right. Silka. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice heading font. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. I, it, and uh, like I've got a, another project that I'm working on personally that uh, I, I've been eyeing fonts. And I, that process is always like such a nightmare of like going through and trying to suss out just the perfect font for a project. This one looks great. Right. So I have to look yeah, but up. the beautiful fonts are mostly really expensive, which is <laughs> fair. <laughs> hey, true, true. <laughs> and this is actually just a page built in page builder. They have cases, which are like, uh, yeah, project cases. Um, mm -hmm. And what I love about this, it feels really snappy. I mean, this is Nuxt. Um, yeah, it's pre-rendered, so the, the speed is the speed is amazing. Uh, right. Speed score is also really good. There's a form in here which will um, be sent to directors as well. Um, nice. Yeah, and it's a dynamic form. If you if you go to a case and you want to be, then your case will be pre-filled here. Uh, this all will be sent to directors. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what's that's a, a great great looking site? Yeah, yeah very thanks. Cl very clean. Yeah. What are you uh, What are you using for like the the transitions and the animations? Is it uh, like uh, this just is... custom coded CSS or is it uh, like yeah, a different it's library? A, it's a wrapper component. It's called scroll transition dot view. I made it together with someone else, I think. We used it in a previous project yeah. and it just, yeah, it shifted into, uh, into view. 
It's, yeah, it's, it's very tasteful. I think for me, that's one of the other things that I always struggle with on some websites is like everything is animated. There's like a crazy amount of motion and it, it just distracts from the, the story in some cases. But this, is, this looks really well done. I think it, it has to be subtle. Uh, what I would like now is for like working on some images that like slide in from the right, some, some tiny animations. But I don't want it to be much more than this. Um, yeah. yeah, it looks great. So for the for the back end, um, as you see the models we have, this is heavily based on the agency OS, by the way, okay. which I think which you wrote most part of. Yeah, most of it is mine. So thank you for this. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, <laughs> great help. No, I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, you know, that project was like a labor of love because it. It, it took me a long time to figure out how to manage like the page blocks. And I was like, okay, like once you see it and, and you've got a, a reference, it, it's much easier to understand. But when I first came to direct us, I knew this functionality was available. It just I, like, there weren't any good references, reference points to, to use. So I, I'm happy that it's been helpful for you. hundred percent. Oh, it, yeah, it is. I don't know if I would have managed without, I think it's also, it's a plus point because there's a lot of backend systems that you guys took the time to write out a full front end to showcase how it can be used. So that's, I'm very grateful for it. It's, uh, it's amazing. Um, you probably see it's heavily based on agency OS, right? Uh, yeah. There's a page, yeah. you have the blocks, you can move them. Uh, for yeah, it example, looks very familiar. This, yeah. This marquee, this text, that's the one you see here. So it's, it's very easy for the client to work in. Um, What's interesting about this project and uh, something I told you about is the, the, the flows uh, that mm -hmm. we built. Because it's statically generated, um, you can use like a Netlify hook that each time you save a, uh, a change you made, Netlify will start building. But the problem you get when three or four people are changing content is you get a queue of 20, 30 builds uh, a day. Yeah, or so, the client changes a couple of different pages, right? And yeah. They, they like go they're, through they're, it, they, they press save, they change something else, and it's it's triggering builds the whole time yeah. um, on Netlify. So what um, uh, I contacted, I wrote down his username, Arut, Arut on Arut. Discord. Yeah. Arut. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he won several of the, or I think he won at least one of our hackathons. Okay. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah, shout he's out very to active Arut. On, uh, on Discord. Yeah, very helpful member of the community. 100%. Yeah. So he started the idea of uh, these three flows you see in green, yeah. and I finished it. There was one issue, and we worked on it together, we chatted a bit. So what this does is every time a change is pushed, we set a flag, like change pushed through, and we set a timestamp. Mm -hmm. uh, and what these three flows together do is they only trigger a build every five minutes. Um, so you could And, and only when there's changes. Right, yeah. Oh, that's cool. For example, this one, uh, every five minutes, it will look inside the general settings and okay. check the, the variable has changes if it's set to true, and that will trigger this other flow. Okay. Um, and this other flow will trigger a Netlify build and update the current build time and update the settings. So it's... it's um, I gotcha. Yeah. And then there's one more, the publish queue on save. This one just watches uh, if you save oh, anything. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's your... watching the content collections. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Gotcha. And then it checks if it's older than five minutes. Uh, and then it triggers a flow. Or if it's not, it updates that we have some changes. It looks easy now, but we had some it's... work with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Hey, like, hey, trying to figure out like how to structure the flow and, and actually building it, I'm sure. Like, how, how long did it take you to actually? nail it nail the the flow uh, like these three separate flows well our roots did most of it it was almost <laughs> ready he had some issues that were remaining i think we fixed it with i'm not sure um I'm, i don't remember really because i was also a, a flow newbie I, I hadn't used flows before so for me it was a, a very thorough introduction into flows I, yeah, yeah yeah well now you're an expert so that's yeah awesome. <laughs> mostly with a, with a bit of help from Discord. Yeah, hey, the community members are amazing. Um, yeah, that, that I, was yeah. how I learned most when I first started with Directus uh, as well. I, I, I don't know if the other 
have the CMS systems out there, have this community, but the Discord is amazing. It's for me, it's a it's a big plus. Um, I mean, mo probably everyone has good community, but the, the, the directors Discord is really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you got to get this one updated to, I see you're on 10.6.3. Oh, yeah. You got to get it updated to to 10.7 so you can uh, use the theming. And I, right. I think yeah. um, I think 10.8 went actually last night as well. Uh, oh, really? Which has like some preset themes that are available. But, okay, nice. Yeah. I saw the video you guys did on the, what was the name of the week with all the everyday video? Leap Week. Leap yep. Week. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Uh, I think like content versioning is also under 10.7, right? It's, uh, yeah, that's on 10.7 as well. Yeah. Um, it could be, I, I'd i say for your clients, maybe not uh, super helpful. I, I doubt they have like a ton of different versions of content, but for right. uh, larger sites where you need to, to manage changes, uh, definitely helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the teaming, I need to try it. It's a coincidence, but the director's team is matches the, this website really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the purple. Yeah, maybe that's yeah, maybe that's what uh, what drew my eye to it, or, or what I yes you know, subconsciously I was like, hey, this looks amazing. Uh, yeah, it, it, that purple plays into it for sure. Yeah. Um, there's a there's one more website I wanted to show. This is um, yeah, yeah, definitely. This is a website for an interior uh, high end design store uh, in our city. Uh, and they they loved uh, directors. They used to work with WordPress, and they were very excited when I showed them the finished CMS and how easy it was to change things. Um, so this is also a project very heavy on good photography. Um, and directors was great in this one because I managed to use the the block system in in the for like for example, if we have a, a blog, and there's a, mm -hmm. this is in Dutch. I don't uh, suppose you uh, can read it, but the, we're using the block builder. I think I I, I read it here. Uh, if you go to the um, to the blog, and then you have a blog, and we're using the blocks as well to um, really uh, write the content. Yeah, yeah. So what that the way do is... a client can embed like rich rich content, like videos and and things like yeah. that. A video is not yet. Sorry, but images. Oh. They can. This is a, a text block. They could add a, a gallery block in which they can combine uh, uh, images. Yeah. So it's, nice. Yeah, it, it's yeah. cool. Like especially because it's very photo heavy, and they yeah, do. Yeah, I learned a lot from from directors for this project, especially do like they, the blocks. Ah, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, do they? Is it a furniture business? Is yeah. That what it is? They do okay. high end furniture, like the Eames chair is something they sell, like. Um, the classical higher end brands. Um, oh, yeah. I got you. Yeah. So they yeah, they yeah, even have they have cool. a big collection as well. Um, for example, Vita is a well known brand, and in this one they can also write text and then they can add these images themselves. Um, and inside directors they can choose. I want this image to be a size small, medium, or large, and the grid will using series as grid will place them like this. So yeah. it was a fun project. Learned a lot about directors, about the the, the M two A system. Yeah, yeah, it looks really nice. Um, yeah, and I like that you're giving clients a little little control over presentation, but you know, like not enough to break the design. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, I think that's the problem with with WordPress. Sometimes it's, there's a lot of things the client can do wrong, and and. I think people like it when they just, can just change only what they want to change, right? Yeah. It, it, like, honestly, like I, the clients that I worked with in the past, like WordPress and, and stuff like Squarespace, uh, it gives them, it, it, it's distracting, right? Mm -hmm. Because what I really need them to do or needed them to do was go in and add content and photos. And what they ended up doing was like tweaking the spacing, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, Hey, this doesn't look right. Or, yeah. you know, they spend three hours tweaking the design on the website and they, they skip over the content. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I appreciate the tour. Um, it, it looks amazing. You know, what, yeah. um, hey, what is the, the future is something I, I like to, Ask everybody I, I, before we we started recording. You said you gave a, a talk on uh, Chat GPT and stuff, but uh, 
that would could be an interesting little thread. But what what are your future plans for your agency? You know, what what kind of projects are you guys working on now or, or getting ready to launch soon? Like what's in the cards for you? Yeah, I think I have some exciting I have two projects coming up and they both need multi-language. Um, it's something which I'm very afraid to start doing because I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, I was hoping you would have done it in the agency OS. <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's the next version, right? <laughs> I'll wait for you to finish that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, so I think um, with directors, I, I took on some small projects. I blocked one really big project because I was afraid because I don't know yet how to do it. So for me, the future really is to get these bigger projects up and running in directors. Uh, see if I can use multi-language uh, together with Nuxt and the block builder system. I know it's possible in directors. I just have to find out how to do it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a matter of just like getting into it. It's, it's, it's one that I'm keen to explore as well. So I, like, as you get into it, definitely hit me up. Um, yeah. The like the translation interface, super easy to use inside Directus. Like the the pieces yeah. that I'm not 100 percent on, and maybe somebody watching this can like school us both. Uh, it would is just like how to how the best way to architect that on the front end and and like connect it. Um, and I think there's for Nux there's the uh, there's a module I think that that would potentially play into it. I haven't messed with it though. The uh, you mean the I-18 yeah, yeah. Yeah. module? Yeah. yeah, I haven't messed with it yet. I think it's it's fairly, I've used it with a static website. So where the, the, the translation strings are just a JSON file, and it works perfectly. Uh, it even hooks into the transition state so that when you change language, you have a fade out that changes. Oh, fade nice. In. Yeah. I think nice. well, the question will be like, how do we, like if you do a request to, to directors for a page, do you give back all translations and just filter them out on the front end? Or when the user changes language, do you refresh yeah, the request to directors? I think that would be the way to do it. Yeah, that's probably how I would do it. Um, yeah. I, I have to connect you with uh, the, the guys at Heinrich and Heinrich. Uh, they all were right, one of yeah. the, the previous we, we episodes. On email. Yeah, they've got, yeah they've, they've got a project that um, they're... I, I don't think it was actually like two different languages, but they were using the translation inside Directus to to manage that side of it. Uh -huh, um, okay. It was like two yeah. locations, like they wanted to have two versions of the site, but it was all it was all still in English. But they were still using uh, the the translations interface for it. I remember. I think they used the translations interface to show these two locations, right? Yep. I remember yep. you did a video with them as well. Uh, very interesting yeah. guys. Yeah. So, or what's the the future day like for the agency? Or like, you know, um, what are your your goals for, you know, I guess like a little longer term, you know, a year, two years, three years, five years? It's a good question. What's the, I think the future on that side. Yeah, in the coming year, I want to be like become really good and just next time directors. I mean. Some new projects require me to do look something up, like this multi-language thing. This is something that I don't. It's hard to estimate. Client asks how much is gonna cost me more to have multi-language, but I don't know. So I'm gonna be happy once I I've built a few very complex um, integrations between Next and Directors, so that I can quickly and correctly estimate future projects and just get them up and running uh, much quicker. And then there's also, I have a little second company I'm starting called Wayu. It's a, it's a, we're going to build sort of a SaaS platform to connect patients with medical professionals. So I want to start exploring multi-tenancy and directors as well, uh, which is like also a big topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing more about that project, Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll be happy to um, share all my findings with the community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, one thing that I love about everybody that works with Directus. Yeah, they're is so helpful and, and just willing to share. I, I think you know ultimately that that's what um, like an open source product. Like yeah, that's one of the ways that uh, we can compete with a 
as a smaller team with with like larger products, um, you know, some mm-hmm. of the the SaaS based headless CMS and, and other products, um, but just our community, uh, amazing community and, and full of supportive yeah. people like yourself and Arude. Uh, we'll make sure we give him a, a shout out again yeah. in this thing. Do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I wonder if like, I think like headless, headless CMS feels like the future to me. Just it's so obvious to decouple the front and the back end. It's it's just like your, your data platform and you can do anything you want with it. So I look forward to pretty seeing more of that evolve uh, in, the, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, and one last parting question before we go. Is there is there anything um, you would like to see from us at, at Directus, you know, in terms of uh it could be features inside the system or, you know, uh, otherwise, you know, something inside the community or documentation or guides or anything like that. There's one thing I'm looking forward to, but I saw some threads on GitHub already. It's, um, what's the correct name? Like if you upload an image that you can like select a, a part of the image that's the most important. Oh, the focus. Um, yeah. Focal I, I points. The name. That's the yeah. Focal points. Yeah. Focal, that's amazing because... A lot of clients upload a picture and obviously your website is responsive and it's like, oh, but my partner's face is out of the picture. It's like, okay, but it just scales. So it would be amazing to really have the client control what's important for them in the picture. But I think Rake was busy with it. Uh, I haven't checked, but I'm looking really forward to that one and my clients as well. Yeah. 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 That, that's a big one. Um, yeah. I, I love that feature in some of the other CMSs I've seen and that uh, I'm not exactly sure how the implementation of that will work, but one I'm very excited for as well. Yeah, me too. Well, well perfect. Miguel, um, thanks again, man. I I really enjoyed this conversation, looking at the, the projects that you've built with Directus and Nuxt. Um, amazing work, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks. And thanks for having me. It was great talking to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll have to do this again sometime.